And um, I think it's a little more familiar. Feel free to join along as you pick up on it. When the pain of this world surrounds us. Hymn number 704 in your red hymnal if you want to follow the notes. It could be really handy. When pain of the world surrounds us with darkness and despair, when searching just confounds us with false hopes everywhere, when lives are starved for me. theme today is friendship and so what's appropriate but carol king's original song that james taylor made even more famous you've got a friend so feel free if anybody wants a solo on verse three it's yours take it away steve when you down in trouble and you need a helping Oh, nothing is going right Close your eyes and think of me And soon I will be there To brighten up even your darkest night It's just called my name and you know wherever I am I'll be running to see you again winter, spring, summer and fall all you've got to do is call and I'll be there dark and full of clouds 
Did the sun really come out and now it's no longer raining? Oh my goodness, can you imagine? So talking about friendships, we just had an open house for Sally for her graduation from high school that was yesterday. And it was just amazing to see all the friends, all the blasts from the past, from the day we moved here in 2010 to uh, Wisconsin, and to see the friends of all these, uh, all these years. So it was a really blessing of a day. Um, thank you for being present here tonight, worship, to center ourselves upon the Lord. Again, we're focusing on friendships. We're going to look at John 15, one of my favorite passages. Anybody know what John 15 is about? That you bear much? Fruit. Fruit! Yes! So Jesus is the vine. We are the? Branches. Branches. You guys are on. Please stand as you're able, and let's do a double shalom with one another, wishing the best health and well-being for each other. All right, right before we go into the healing service, we're going to remember what a friend we have in Jesus. It's a little upbeat song. Some of you have sung this before. Join along as you pick up on it. Have you guys shalomed everybody three times? All right. Who starts this? Everybody has trials and temptations. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody has a great isolation. Oh, 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 oh. We can lay our burdens down. We can lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's to us. 
Everybody knows sorrow. So we'll continue with the service of healing and meditation as on the screen or in your hands. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We gather to hear the word of God, pray for those in need, and ask God's blessing on those who seek healing and wholeness through Christ our Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. O Lord, you are indeed the healer of all our ills. We bring to you, Lord, our bodies, minds, and spirits hurting and broken from the violence, ills, trauma, and cares of a world separated from you. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on me, O God, and make me whole. God, we ask that you heal us. Give us the strength, health, wisdom, and knowledge found only through you. Send your life-giving spirit so that we may live our lives with courage in the profound peace of your love. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on me, O God, and make me whole. Oh God, we ask that you sustain those who seek to alleviate the pain and suffering of this world. Give strength, courage, wisdom, and knowledge to all doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, researchers, and all other medical care givers, volunteers, and professionals. Send your life-giving spirit so that their ministries may bring healing and promote health. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe, Breathe on me, O oh God, and, and make me whole. He also with those who work to heal the wounds of societies and nations. Guide, protect, and strengthen our lawyers and police, chaplains and pastors, health care and social workers, politicians, military, diplomats, and all others who work for economic and social reform. Send your life-giving spirit that they may promote your love and grace, bringing healing to those in conflict and stability to those who are vulnerable. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe, Breathe on, on me, O God, and, and make, make me whole. whole. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. As a parent embraces a wounded child, so does God reach out and hold close all of us, not caring if our wounds were self-inflicted or received from others, 
not caring if our scars of mind and body are pitiful or ugly, not caring about what we were or are, what we have done or not done. As a wounded child, we cry out and run into God's embrace. And God not only accepts, but welcomes and loves us, cleansing, healing, and restoring us to wholeness of heart, mind, body, and soul. Heal me, O God. Make, Make me, me whole in Christ. Christ. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We give you thanks, O God, source of life and health. For in Jesus you became flesh and came to know the depth of human suffering. You sent the disciples to heal those who were sick. Bless this oil, that all who are anointed with it may be healed, strengthened, and renewed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The ministry of Jesus invites us to new life in God with each other. And in the laying on of hands and the anointing, we proclaim the good news that God desires us to be well, to be healthy, and one in the body of Christ. And so all are welcome to come forward to receive the sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. You may come forward now. are silent. You see every wound of body, mind, and spirit, those inflicted upon us and those we have inflicted. You see us, touch us, mend us. Amen. God so loved this world and this people that God sent Christ to suffer and die for all. Accept now this gift that you are forgiven, reconciled, accepted, and loved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Of course, what I'm, I, am I going to ask you to do? Please stand and let's prepare our hearts and may they be good soil. Let my heart be good soil.
open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soul, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. You may be seated. I've been doing some reflecting on what's been going on over the last few months, particularly with the Chosen and Jesus' relationship with his disciples and the dynamics going on there. What have you noticed over the last few months of what's going on between Jesus and the disciples? More intense? Yeah. There's a deep heart and concern. What else do you see going on? Dynamics. Relational dynamics. Uh, what's that? They are changing. You see them growing. I see them growing. I see them getting more connected to one another. Not just caring for themselves, but caring for the other person. What I see is they're turning to Jesus. The disciples are turning to Jesus and going, how do we deal with this, right? How do you deal with someone who just lost his future wife, right? How do you deal with somebody I should forgive, but I can't forgive because he nearly put me out on the streets and my wife out, right? How do I deal with these things? Who do I turn to? Well, what a friend we have in Jesus, right? Right? This is who we turn to. Ideally, that's the first one we turn to is God, Help me in this situation. I don't know what to do. And so what we're modeled by with these disciples is they're often turning to Jesus and go, what do I do here? And I love that model. Now, they get him in person. Wouldn't that be convenient? You know, to just go, hey, I think Jesus is camping around the corner. I think I'm going to trouble him a little, right? But that's not our case. But we can turn to Jesus any time, right? And we know that Jesus suffered. Jesus knows what we have felt. He's experienced it. And that's really powerful. So we're going to unpack John 15 in a minute. We're only going to scratch the surface because it's such a great passage. But I want to begin this message with a couple songs. If I could turn this on. Okay, we got that. This is what Dave puts. Thank you for being a friend. Anybody watch that? Travel down. Well, I like those words, okay? I, I, I know the song some. I never watched Golden Girls. Anybody watch that, though? Some of you could relate, huh? Oh, yeah, wow, okay. This is good. I hit it. Um, but I think we should try singing it, right? Thank you for being a friend. Travel down a road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Didn't she sing it that high? Oh, okay, well, I, that's how I picked it up, okay? Um, there's another one, um, there's a thing for my generation called Friends. I never really watched it anyways, but, um, but the song was so good. Um, I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too. Anybody recognize that? I might have slaughtered it. Okay. But in any case, you got the idea. I love the phrases, right? I'll be there for you, right? Be there. We talked about that last week. Thank you for being a friend. All these things are so important. Oh my gosh, this is not the right slide I was going to have on there. I thought that was going to be pictures. Hmm, I wonder how that got there. Well, oh well. Um, bummer, because that had all the pictures of my friends that I wanted to highlight, so I'm going to have to change that tomorrow. I don't know how to do that. Uh, let me say, in a nutshell, I'm just going to go back and say, so, so if I could put everybody up there, I put my friends from childhood. You remember the days? Did anybody ride around on their bike and pick up their friend and go all over the place? 
That's what we did in the suburbs of Golden Valley. It was glory days. Back then, you could do anything. You didn't know what your parents, what you were getting into either, right? But we'd go for candy. We would do all sorts of things. It was a blast. And then I remember Okaboji Lutheran Bible Camp. We're having our 100th anniversary in, in a few weeks. And so just the precious friendships that were made there at Bible Camp in the summer. Luther College, Kindred when I toured in that band. And then all the people now. And I had all these pictures of you guys actually sitting in the pew and, and other situations and whatnot. But it reminds me of all the friends you have throughout the years, Right? So I want us to be reflecting on friendships, like just now where I had the open house for Sally, the friendships that she's had over the years and she invited them. Friends matter. Now, some of those are intimate relationships where we go deep. Some might be fresh, like brand new. Some may have not even started, right? And I want us to be thinking in terms of who are the friends that God may want us to tend to in our lives that might be friends, blasts of the past, or perhaps current that God has placed in our life to nurture. Because I believe that friends matter. And they matter more than we realize. If you were to look up things of what makes us healthy, especially in our older years, some of you might be retired or think you're retired or semi-retired or whatever you call it. But they say in a holistic health thing, friendships are really critical for you to thrive in your later years. And so what I would say is friends matter. Adam needed who? Good. That was a quick response. Just throwing that out there. Um, sorry, a puppy did not do for Adam. He needed Eve, right? Sorry, dog lovers. Um, we need human conversation. We need human touch, human care, contact, and support. We were not made to be alone. Friends, we really need one another. And why is it so important? I believe it's more urgent these days than we realize. See this, and this will convict us. The U.S. Surgeon General today declared a new public health epidemic in America, loneliness. A new report from his office finds loneliness can have profound effects on mental health as well as heart disease, stroke, and dementia. It tracks a decline in social connections and links all of this to billions of dollars in health care costs. Dr. Vivek Murthy is the U.S. Surgeon General, and he joins me now. Dr. Murthy, welcome back to the News Hour. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Amna, for having me. So your declaration and this report very clearly link loneliness to matters of life or death, to put it plainly. This one number stuck out to me. It found social isolation increases the risk of premature mortality by nearly 30 percent. How and why did you come to focus on this topic? Well, I'm not, I had certainly had per firsthand experience with loneliness uh, in my own life uh, and also in my care of patients where I found so often people come into the hospital for one condition or another, but there was loneliness lurking in the background. But it was only when I began my tenure as Surgeon General that I started to realize in talking to people across the country that loneliness was extraordinarily common. In fact, we are now finding that one in two adults report measurable levels of loneliness. And it turns out that young people are most affected uh, you know, than any other group. And here's why this is so concerning. It's because we've realized that loneliness is more than just a bad feeling. It has real consequences for our mental and physical health. It increases our risk of depression, anxiety, and suicide. But social disconnection also raises the risk of heart disease and dementia and premature death on levels uh, on par uh, with smoking daily and even greater than the risks that we see associated with obesity. So however you look at it, Loneliness and isolation are public health concerns that we have to prioritize. What do you think? I think it's one of the major issues in our society today. We're in a very private society, right? Many of us will drive into our garages and not say hello to our neighbor on the way in, right? We're country bumpkins, so some of us live on some serious acreage, right? And even the girls on Washington Street, the golden girls, you know, I mean, they don't see each other every day either, right? you know, or gather at tolling corners. So I, it's, it's just not the same as it used to be where we really knew our neighbors and were as connected. And I see that as vitally important for us and part of our mission in making friends with people and being connected. Because if one out of two are feeling lonely, and this is certainly true for our teens, we've got mission work to do, right? So I want us to feel that. I want us to know that. This is kind of the main theme. I want you to, who do you know who is lonely? 
who may need a friend right now. That's the big contemplation point for this week, and I want you to be thinking about that every day of this summer. Who needs me to reach out to them, okay? Just have that as, as a thread in your thought. And just to know that they may need you, and God may be sending you to be that person, to be their friend. And that was Jesus' point to the disciples when he says, love one another. Jesus emphasizes it this way to stay connected to him. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Another word is abide in me. Or another translation is stay connected to me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So Jesus is our source, right? That's the one we stay connected to. Without Jesus being the source, we lack that ability to be the best friend we possibly can be. And it goes on. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who parts from me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. I've got a bunch of them right now in my fire pit. My trees that are really old now are, are spewing dead branches all the time. They're going to be trimmed up this year, I hear. But that's what's going on. They're not, they have no life left in them, right? And so they're being gathered and burned. But if you stay joined to me, and my words remain in you, you may ask any request you like, and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit. This brings great glory to my Father. And so it concludes, well, near conclusion, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you, and so abide, live into this love. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. You will dwell in it. You will be connected to it. And just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So again, I use the word remain, abide, stay connected to, stick to, stand by me. Hang out with me. Be there, okay? Jesus wants you to connect with him. Now, I love these images, and there's so many more, but it's Jesus giving a hug to each person, even Nicodemus of all people. But the powerful images is they're connected, right? And that bodily hug shows that connection. And then finally, the last verses. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you may go, okay? So it's an active, it's an action, right? We are to go and to bear much fruit and that your fruit may remain, that your, the Father may give you whatever you ask him in my name. This is my command that you love one another. So basically the interpretation is to love one another is to care, right? To befriend other people to be there for people. That is vital. Last week we talked about being our brother's or sister's keeper. What does that mean? What was that, Mary? Look out for them. Yes, yes. That's a great way of saying it. Look out for them. Anybody else? Be there when they need you. Yeah. To be concerned, I had somebody from our church inquire with me, how's Dan doing? She could see Dan from a distance. She could see him actually joyful, interacting, and all this. But she was her brother's keeper. She is concerned for Dan. She prays for him. I know at least weekly, if not throughout the week. 
And so she is being exactly what Jesus said. And she is caring for Dan, as some of you have, and I, I, I celebrate that with you. Be there. Simple phrase, right? Just be there. Just be present. Um, so again, I can, I can keep referring to this gathering. Um, Chuck was there. Remember Chuck? Chuck is the one who is battling cancer. He's got brain. He's got some lung. He's got all sorts of things and going, and I'm always checking in and going, um, so what's new? Kind of leaves it open, whatever he wants to share or not share, right? And, and so he, he gave me some of the details and stuff. And there was a few other people who were going through things, and it's a great opportunity to connect, but also to kind of steal away and separate and kind of do that one-on-one, -on -one, to be able to check in and see how things are going. But amid, well, there's the photo. <laughs> so who, who, who's got what? Um, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so let's go with that. Um, so, so let's go through some of these things. I want you to be thinking specifically of your family. I'm referring to mine in situations, but I want your brain to go into all sorts of different directions. Some of you are going, I've already been there. I've already checked out. But if you could just do that, that would be great. So this is, um, this is our family and to care for them. And so how can I connect with each family member throughout this summer? I want, I want us to think of the season of summer. How do we do this? So they're all here this weekend with Chris's parents and Chris's um, brother and sister-in-law. The kids weren't able to make it, but we're going to focus on them. We're going to be there at the cabin with them this summer, which will be great. Um, then you've got the softball team. This is us hanging out at a pizza joint. Roger knows this. And, um, of course, my wife, my wife and I are going to Asheville, North Carolina on a trip. We're going to be with Michael Carr. We're going to learn the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But basically, it's a glorified honeymoon, right? So that's a score, huh? And then you got the golf buddies, some of those strange creatures you've seen before. Got to throw in some Christiansons in every slide, right? And then you've got, hey, Alan was here today. Um, Stu, who is battling stomach cancer, so being there for him as pastors. This is Dave Beeksma. He's the guy who I have a one-on-one. -on -one, should I say there's three of us pastors that get online, and we do some coaching with him and just come alongside him. And then you've got Chuck, who was here today, Chuck and Andrea. This is my siblings, so to be in touch with them. Rob and I are doing a retreat this summer. And then you've got some other pastors here. And then there's the whole congregation, right? So these are friends that I get the opportunity to be with this summer, have some intentional one-on-ones to be there. But I want you to be thinking, who are the people you'll invest in? Now, of all things, I didn't include some other people. I've got a new member in our congregation that likes to do what? <laughs> and every Friday morning, say, hey, Tom, would you be available every Friday morning to golf at 5.30 a.m. at Deer Track? 5.30? No, no, I can't do that. But I can do some Fridays. Yes, yes, we can do that. But, you know, you never know. The door is just open, right? He's a new friend. And he's got stuff to share. We did breakfast together. Hey, there's a lot going on. I share that with you because the opportunities can be abundant. And how do we seize those moments? How do we play with those moments? How do we enjoy those moments and just simply being there for people? So, I want you to turn to somebody near you. You can turn to your spouse if that's all you can go. But if you want to stretch yourself and go beyond your spouse or, or who you came with, I want you to share with, with that person over two minutes who you will intentionally, um, that God might be putting on your heart to reach out to this summer or soon. Break. Go. Partner up. All right, you guys getting a little out of hand here. Everybody had their chance to share? Hey, you like that bike? See, that just reminds me of childhood when just biking over to all over the place and all that kind of stuff. No, I did not. You know, that was in the movie that had a dog named Toto, right? What movie was that? Just testing you, just testing. Okay. Um... Thank you for sharing. I think it's important for us to do that exercise, kind of provide some accountability, but also focus and think that through. And um, I, I, again, I, I really believe what Jesus is doing with his disciples and does with us is saying, you know what? 
Um, you need me first. I, I don't know why I didn't get this slide in. Um, I must have sent an old doc, um, thing. But there's a book called Out of Solitude by Henry Nouwen, one of my favorite authors. And what, what he is emphasizing is say that have that quiet time with Jesus, right? Be still. Again, I told you I get up at six each day and I do some of that walking around the campus and being still at home. But I'm trying to stay connected to the vine and listen to the vine in Jesus, right? So that I can know perhaps Jesus or the Spirit has something to lead me to that day, situational or a person or just that openness to go um, what might arise, okay? So I don't know how all this thing came together and why it's not up there, but in any case, that's the flow. Let's take a moment now and, and pray. Lord, we ask you to draw us close to you, that we be so close to you that we are actually one of your branches, that that the power from you as the vine flows through us, and that power is love. And Lord, we pray that we would stay so connected to you, that we see you as our friend, and you've called us friends, that you are our source, our source of hope, wisdom, strength, shalom, and love. And we know you fill us with that love for others, but may we continue to turn to you to be filled. We also know we have certain people in our lives that may be lonely, may be isolated, um, simply need our presence to be there. Lead us to these people. May we be your messengers. May we be your missionaries and be that great friend to the people who need us now in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sang this last week, and I really liked it. And I think, you know, be it the healing service and all this, we really want Jesus um, to walk with us in, in any situation in life. And perhaps we're thinking of that person that we just shared now and, and can sing along with this. So please stand as you choose, and we'll sing, I want Jesus to walk with me. So we were going to attempt, but I didn't do good communication this week, sing one of the songs that I grew up on in the 80s. Michael W. Smith played keyboards for Amy Grant, and this was one of the most famous songs he did. His wife actually wrote it. So as we collect the offering, I'm just going to share with you the, um, the chorus. I'm not going to sing it because I'll probably slaughter it. But what it says is, friends are friends forever, if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never because the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, Father, the Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker, maker of heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth, of all, all that things, is seen, seen and unseen. And unseen. We, believe we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God begotten, eternally begotten of the Father, Father God, God from God, God light, light from light, 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 true God from true God, God begotten, begotten not made, of one, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. buried. On the third day, he rose, he rose again, again in accordance, in accordance with, with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before the triune God, to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. You reawaken our hearts to your mercy. We give you thanks for those people who help to renew the church today and who have done so in every age. Encourage the creativity and persistence of all seeking to transform the church into a closer vision of your beloved community. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. We see that your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and in the blessing of plants, granting food in their right season. Heal lands scarred by deforestation, pollution, infestation, tornadoes, or other weather-related devastations. Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Merciful God, receive, receive our Lord. prayer. Our nations and communities are divided, O oh God. Teach us again to listen with curiosity and mercy, even in disagreement. Grant us the humility to acknowledge our hardness of heart and make us bold in modeling cooperation for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Hear the prayers of all who cry out to you from the depths of fear, despair, illness, or hopelessness, especially those that are on your screen at this time. Carson, Carson Steve, Steve L, L, Jordan, Jordan L, L, Andrew, Tim, Tim Dan, Dan Megan, Megan, Mark C, Imelda, Imelda and, and those, those serving in the military, in the military around, around the globe, the globe and those, those who have returned return. home. And at this time, if you have others that you would like to pray for, either aloud or silently, please do so. With haste, Rescue victims of trafficking, exploitation, and abuse, and bless organizations and individuals who work on their behalf. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom and clarity to all who are in seasons of discernment 
and transition, high school graduates preparing for first jobs or new educational journeys, those who are shifting careers, and those who are navigating changes in their relationships. Accompany them with your peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Praise to you for our ancestors in faith who believed, spoke, and lived in you. Give us confidence that as Jesus was raised, so we too will be raised with all the saints into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus called these, these men and women to, to follow him as students. And um, not only were they students, he eventually called them friends, right? When you do life together, deeply together for three years, almost every single day, can you imagine that? Day in, day out, hour to hour? That's incredible. Some serious friendships. And so when they broke bread together, as they had done for three years, he changed the script. He changed everything. Not only the script from the Passover, but he changed the script to say, when you gather in my name, when I'm no longer with you, I want you to remember what I've done for you. So he took the bread, broke it, gave thanks to his heavenly father and said, take and eat. This is my body being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, it's shed for you and it's shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his followers to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please come to the table. All are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I mean, this sun really came out. Look at this, man. It's just glorious. You guys see that? Peek outside. Pretty amazing. All right, ministry moments. Anything we need to highlight? Last Sunday, I um, mentioned to folks, I didn't mention it on Saturday, but um, I asked if folks could bring a, you know, a can of food every once in a while for me to bring down to all people's church. Um, when I got down there, I found out that um, they almost didn't open last week because they ran out of food the week before. And uh, I, I didn't read their letter, <laughs> but something must have came to me because I did ask for extra food. So just to let you know that your, you know, other churches did step up and they were able to open this week, but, uh, and, and St. Olaf, you know, helps a lot down there. So um, when you go shopping, you know, just even if you bring an extra can every couple of weeks, it would, it would, would help. I've been buying, buying food with a donation and, and um, I just appreciate some help to bring in a can and every once in a while be helpful. They need it. Thank you. It's a good way of being a friend. Just a reminder that we have St. Ben's meal next week. So a week from this coming Tuesday. So pre preparation on Monday the 17th, the meal on Tuesday the 18th. If you haven't looked at the sign-up sheet, which I'm not sure where it is right now, but maybe we can find it and put it out there. I'm pretty sure that we have enough cookies. So I don't think we need any more cookies. But there may be other time slots where we need people to cut vegetables and to prepare that way. And we usually need somebody who can stay when the group who's going into St. Ben's, we need like two people who will stay and wash out the Nescos and have that ready for when we come back, that when we're exhausted, we don't have to do it all. So if that's something you could possibly do, that would run a time frame around three between 3 and 3.30. So if you get a chance to look at that, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Blessings to Roger and Lynn as they travel in, through Germany the next couple weeks. Uh, do we have a slide of our graduates? So Amaya, Breakup, Carter, Meyer, and Sally Peets, graduating from high school and off to new ventures, uh, all going to college. Two are mechanical engineers, and Sally is a nurse. Um, that's what they'll be studying, should I say. Hey, there it is, look at this. Boom, isn't that great? So when you do see these people, um, greet them and ask them, you know, how, how, how the transition is going, tell them congratulations, all that good stuff. So, pretty cool. All right, seeing nobody else stand, seeing Jerry ready to clean. Yep, look at that, and June is ready to get out of here. So let's, uh, let's sing the Lord's Prayer. Um... Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my
go make friends, love one another. Thanks be to God. Father, let your kingdom come.